Hello, we are doing wireless communication today on page 90 of your science book. There's only five questions to answer. Hopefully you can hear me over everyone else talking. So, listen, they don't take hints real well at all. Not at all. It's amazing. All right, anyhow. Five questions. Uh, we will spend tomorrow reviewing. I recommend, of course, you do the same thing because your test, their test is on Wednesday. Your test will be on Thursday because you're watching this on Tuesday, although we're filming it on Monday. I'm old. It's hard to keep up with. Okay, here we go. All right, wireless communication. Yes, Mr. Spears. We haven't even started class, but I already got questions. The bad thing is that this is probably so out of date. It's like the it is out of date. Yeah, we as we get to north, uh, near the end, especially when we start talking about cell phones and all, it is very much um, not so much the way the cell phones work, but what some of the some of the uh, things it's talking about that a cell phone is capable of doing. Okay, because this book is a little bit older, and communication changes so rapidly; it has changed dramatically just in the last three or four years. Uh, as far as cell phone capabilities uh, and changing daily. So, yeah, you know, you write something today, uh, next year it could be out of date. So, and this book is older. So, I'm just glad it mentions cell phones. Okay, page 90. Okay, so talk about how you race home, you switch on TV, you catch the final inning of your favorite big team's uh, big game. That is what we used to do, especially because the World Series used to be played during the day when I was a kid. So you either try to sneak an AM transistor radio into school and run the thing up under your shirt into your ear. Every teacher knew that every little boy was listening to the ball game, but they didn't care because I think they actually were too. Uh, now you run home and you want to play something on the internet. You don't care about watching, yeah, Fortnite, Fortnite or something of that nature. Okay. Or that so. one kid keeps obsessed with the market. Okay. In an instant, you, you in an instant you can see and hear the game just as if you were sitting in the stands. Uh, today you can communicate with people far away in just seconds. You can watch live television broadcast of a soccer game from Europe. Or listen to a, a, a radio report from Africa. So how does these programs get sent to you? And you, you know, you probably never thought about that, but it is. Uh, if you're a big soccer fan and they're playing the World Cup in Europe, and you flip on the TV to watch it, you're seeing the action just like they are if you're sitting in the stands from the other side of the world. It, it's really pretty cool that we have learned to manipulate radio waves that we can do that that's really that's really that's that's pretty cool okay uh radio waves carry or transmit signals for both radios and television programs uh the radio waves are produced by charged particles moving back and forth inside transmission antennas okay now a transmission antenna what do you think transmission antenna might do it can send it out sends it out yeah it sends it out and a receiving antenna comes in. You receive it, yeah, you, you're getting it, you're receiving it, okay? Uh, makes sense. Uh, yeah, they didn't name them something crazy. I mean, it's just, they're transmitting, they're receiving. Pretty simple stuff, okay? Uh, now, how they work is a little bit more complicated, but what you call them is pretty simple. Two methods of transmitting the singles, amplitude <laughs> modification and frequency modification. Radio station broadcasts in either of those, okay? Television station uses oh, both AM and FM. A, a, M, and FM. That's oh. it, okay? So AM stands for amplitude modification. I never knew that. Yeah, most people don't. Most people don't. It's just AM. You don't know what it stands for, okay? This is a method of transmitting singles by changing the amplitude of a wave, Okay? The information that will become sound, such as speed, speech and music, it is coded in changes or modification of waves' amplitudes. The frequency of the wave remains constant. Okay? At a radio broadcast station, sound is converted into electronic singles. And the electronic singles are then converted into a pattern of changes 
and the amplitude of radio waves. So there's a lot more to it than what we think. Okay? Your radio receives the wave and then converts it back into sound. Okay? That's kind of like your ears works on the same principle, if you remember. Okay? You're hearing me talk, but all that is actually happening is my vocal cords are vibrating, breaking the air around me and sending waves to your ears where it goes through all the works in, in your outer, middle, and inner ear and sends an electronic signal to your brain that then turns it into what I'm saying just that quick. Radios works pretty basically the same way. Pretty amazing. Sure. Okay. Um, if you find this sort of stuff interesting. Uh, let's see. Okay. AM radio waves have relatively long wavelengths are easily reflected by the Earth's ion sphere. Okay. That's the really high one up there. Okay. Uh, it is a region of charged particles high up in the atmosphere. Uh, the reflected waves bounce back to Earth's surface, and therefore, AM radio stations can broadcast over a longer distance. Uh, of course, now, AM is used primarily for talk radio, things of that nature. Uh, AM or uh, FM is where most of your big time stations are uh, on their FM stations, okay? Uh, and FM stands for frequency modification, okay? And that's the method of transmitting signals by changing the frequency of a wave. FM singles travels or has changed or modification of a frequency of the wave. The other one is the amplitude. It changes the amplitude. FM is frequency. Okay? Uh, and the amplitude of the wave remains constant, so it doesn't change. The FM wave have higher frequency and more energy than an AM wave. As shown in figure 14, they pass through the uh, ion ion sphere instead of being reflected back to Earth. So they use actually use uh, communication satellites to bounce the signals off of. Okay? Uh, you ever notice when you're wanting to listen to a radio station, you don't just turn on the radio and hear what you want to hear, right? What happens is they all have different singles different frequencies, if you would. Uh, that's why you might have, you know, you, when you tune into radio, it's a 94.9 or 93.6 or, you know, 104.3 or something of that nature. Because if you, if you didn't, because they all transmit at a different frequency. If they didn't, then every time you turned on a radio, everybody would be trying to come across at one time and all you're going to get is a bunch of jumbo mess. Okay? So that's why. Uh, and radio waves only reach so far with your receiver from, from like a, a station in Greensboro. Uh, if you go all the way across, and you're out in Tennessee somewhere, you're not picking up, you know, if you listen to, I don't know, 93.4, you're not picking up uh, the radio station in Greensboro anymore when you get that far out. Okay, You're probably picking up another station that has that same call signal out there. Okay? I don't want to go so far. Oh, no. Caleb, you've had your hand up for a while. Uh, never mind. Oh, okay. Yes. One time, uh, I was downstairs, I was in Grand Wolf Watch, and this radio station I was to listen to, I turned it on, and we were like a, almost a good there, and it started an hour drive away, and it started playing this like Mexican music with like. Um, yeah, you was picking up, you was picking up a, a local station. Yeah, at I was like. Time. What? It was coming in stronger. Yeah. Um, it was weird because, like, it was just like pure Hispanic language. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Well, you do have you do have uh, you do have radio stations that I mean, you know, Hispanic radio stations that speak Spanish and plays uh, Hispanic music and things like that. Okay. Um, yes. Um, well, uh, this um, this week we went to um, what, uh, a school to see if we 
wanted to change, and like it had the Spanish, a Spanish class and take it into the grade. And my mom was like, well, there's a lot of Spanish people coming into America, so you're gonna have to learn it. And like, I thought their job was to learn English. What? Well, <laughs> no, it's, it's not, everything's not racist. It's not racist to think yeah. that when you come, you go to a country, <laughs> uh, you should learn that country's custom and their language. That's not racist. Okay, any more than it's racist for a Hispanic person to come and not learn English and still speak Spanish. It doesn't make them racist, it just means they didn't learn English. But yeah, okay. everybody it doesn't everybody make me racist, racist because I'm not fluent in Spanish. I live in America, I don't have to be. Okay, It doesn't make me racist, it just means I didn't learn to learn Spanish. Okay. Nowadays, everybody means. thinks everything. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, yeah, the, the word racism and racist is, yeah, well, you're going to throw, we, 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 stop. We, we've gotten to the point, this is not science, but it's just life lesson. We're getting to the point we throw that out so much that it's going to lose its meaning. Yeah. And no one's going to care. You're going to say something's racist anymore and people just want to roll their eyes and keep on going. Because it's it's losing it's losing its meaning because really everything that, everything I mean uh, my youngest son works at Planet Fitness part time he was accused of racism Friday night by a Caucasian woman because she spoke with an accent how can an accent be racist it's how God made you well to start with it was because she was she was running around without her mask on and he had to go up and tell her to please put your mask on. And then she started talking. So he hadn't heard her speak until he told her to put her mask on, but it was because she had an accent that he told her to put her mask up, not that it's mandated by the government. It's, but so we're back again. She threw out, he was discriminating against her, it was racism. So it's just completely lost all meaning. Of course, they banned her from the club, so it really worked out well for her. Okay? All right. FM stands for frequency modification. Frequent, uh, frequency modification is a method of transmitting signals by changing the frequency. We talked about that. Uh, so FM waves are usually received more clearly and produce a better sound quality than AM. Okay? The radio spectrum. In addition to radio and television broadcasts, radio waves are used for many types of communication. Uh, taxi drivers. Firefighters, police officers, they still have a radio in their vehicles. Uh, if you've ever noticed, uh, police officers, uh, I think firemen do also, but police officers, I know they have the radio on their belt and the cord that comes up and they've got the thing attached up here on their shirt somewhere. That's the mic so they can, and the speaker, they can hear and speak into it. Uh, but that's on a different frequency, okay? So they can communicate. That, 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 frequency stays clear, that is only for police communication. Okay? Same thing with the firemen, uh, taxi drivers has a, for they can talk back to the dispatch. Uh, of course, you don't have taxis like you used to anymore, although well, you do, but not as many. Uh, but they could communicate, that's how the dispatch, if you wanted to take a taxi, you actually had to call into the dispatch, and they would call the cab, and you know that was working that area and tell him the location he would go by and pick up somebody not like you okay yeah it's kind of i mean same same principle okay um the federal communication commission or the fcc uh assigns different radio frequency for different uses uh, radio stations are allowed to use one part of the radio spectrum television station uses other parts uh, taxis and police radios are assigned separate sets of frequency, okay? Uh, you have probably seen these assigned frequency when you tune in your radio. That's what we talked about earlier. Each radio station has a different assigned number, and that's the frequency that you're picking them up on. Yes, Kayla? Isn't that because they don't want just anybody picking up on, like, communication for On police and, uh, yeah, yeah, police and fire, yeah. Yeah, it, you, you, you can buy a scanner that you can actually hear it, it's but, not like World but yeah, like just your them. typical radio will not pick that up. Yeah. It's not like a World War II where like, the Japanese are always picking up our service. Well, that's war. They're, they're, yeah, you, uh, you're picking up all kinds of stuff. We did it to them, they did it to us. Breakers. Yeah, you always try yeah, to MVP, pick up your I think it's All right. MVP. Guys, we're not talking about World War I, World War II communications. Let's talk about that. 
Yes, we'll talk about that when we get to history. We will talk about it then, but we're not talking about it now. The fact I say we're not talking about that now, and we just keep talking about it. Okay. You've probably seen these assigned frequency when you tune in a radio. We've talked about that. Okay, now here's the deal. A hertz is one cycle per second. Okay, that's how many times it, it, something vibrates. If something vibrates a thousand times a second, it has a frequency of a thousand hertz or one kilohertz. Okay, uh, the prefix kilo means 1,000. If something vibrates a million times a second, it has a frequency of a million hertz or one megahertz. Okay, AM station uses kilohertz, FM uses megahertz so that's why the am stations are more clear okay uh, here's one for you vhf you ever heard of that those sta vhf stations on tv very high frequency that's what it stands for really and uhf is ultra high frequency now you probably know something that your parents might have known at one point in time but has forgotten or possibly never knew. Okay, because that's just not something that comes up in everyday conversation. Okay? Probably. Cell phones. Cell phones have become very common. This, this is where we start finding out how, how old her book is. Okay, everyone has one now. But they only work if they are in or near a cell system. Nope. Not here. Okay. We have home Wi-Fi devices now. No, actually they do. Yeah, we do. They still have to be near cell. They, they still got to be in the grid, and you still got to have. That's why you can't actually go off grid. You can have your cell phone. There's places that will not pick up cell reception. Okay. okay. So, uh, same way we did forever without these things. Okay. Better. Yeah, my grandparents. <laughs> Uh, but the thing, the reason you can pick it up in more places now is because more and more cell towers are going up. Okay, when they first came out with these things, you didn't have cell towers every two miles. You didn't have a giant cell tower. Tower. Okay. Now we now we do. Okay. Uh, the, now these things actually work on microwaves. Okay, your cell phone sends out microwaves. Same thing that cooks your food and whatnot. Okay, uh, okay it's microwaves. Uh, well, that's why for a long time people thought that if you went around talking with one on your up near your ear, that you would probably do damage to yourself. It would could possibly cause cancer and things like that because the microwaves are going into you. Yeah. So people. So the answer was to put it on speakerphone and walk around with it out in front of you. I didn't get by far. Or no one ever thought about, hey, maybe I just don't need to be on it 24-7. <laughs> put it down. Um, Will it hurt you? Verdict is still out. I, I've, read, I've read things both ways. Some people say they're not good for you. Other people say that's not going to hurt you at all. So I have no idea. Okay. Uh, the microwaves are tagged with a number unique to your phone. Okay, that's why you have a phone number. Okay. The tower picks up the microwaves and transfers the single to a hub. In turn, the hub channels and transmit the singles to a receiver. And then that receiver may be another tower or another hub, depending on the distance between the two phones. Okay? The, that tower or hub then transmits the single to a receiving cell phone. And the receiving phone rings when it's picked up. The microwave, uh, microwave singles from a tower or hub. Okay, so the whole exchange happens at the snap of a finger. You I mean you think about it? You can call someone in China right now, and by the yeah, time I hit send, within just a couple of seconds, his phone is ringing half, halfway around the world. That's amazing. That's scary. It, it trans, it, it, I mean, it transmits it that quickly. But imagine it's really if quite all, amazing. If all the universities were the Work together with that kind of cellular grid, it would be like a peak, like we would have figured out how to stop a like a horrible disease right now because like everyone can. Well, the key was everyone working together, and unfortunately, 
man's greed and power comes into play. And, you know, it, it's kind of sad, but yeah, we, we could, you would think if we would obey God's word and just work together and be nice to each other, we could solve most of our, the problems that we face. We really could. Okay. In addition to making phone calls, you can also use some. I love this. You can use some cell phone uh, to page or to text, and some of them actually has a camera on them. No one. That was 2005. That shows you how much it, it it has come up in 15 years. Okay, just 15 years. Now, I mean, I grant you that's that's longer than y'all been alive. But you got to remember, when I was a kid, you had a landline. And they called it a party line because you might pick it up and your neighbor might be on the phone and you just had to hang it back up right. and wait for them to get off because they might be two or three families using one line. You didn't even have a dedicated line. Okay? And if you wanted to call long distance, which a lot of times was just the next town over, you had to call. Like, you had to go through the operator yeah. to make and a long distance call. And it cost you more money. Long distance costs more money. More gas. Okay? You had to pay. So you had to pay more money for it. Yeah, so, th- and that's just, now I mean, I grant you, it's been a long time since I was a kid, yeah. but you now see where we are now. Okay? I, I mean, we, yeah, yeah, our communication has changed yeah, dramatically. You don't have to pay to, like, if you have a phone, you don't have to pay to use it. I've often wondered, like yeah, TV, like TV, um, oh, you, you have to pay to have a phone. You have to pay to a lot of money. Now, to have a phone, okay. yes, but once you have oh, that, a phone, yeah. it you don't, you don't, you don't, yeah, it, it covers everything now. Yeah, yeah that's what I was saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is no long distance charges and all that stuff anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is. But, no, there's not. Well, not yeah, there Cell phones used to have roaming charges. If you were out of your area, it went to Rome, and then that would cost you more. What? But, so you don't have that anymore. You don't have that. Oh. No, that they're roaming like you're oh. out wandering around. Yes. That's why expensive. Stop, stop, stop. But I told my parents, and um, when I was little, my parents used to go to Cayman Islands. And you well, know, you're out of country. Yeah. I know. That's what I meant. Yeah, that's a that's a little different. I'm talking states here. You know, it doesn't cost anything to call Winston now from Greensboro. Okay. All right. Now. Communication satellites, satellites orbits Earth, are, are sent to use information around the world. Communication satellite works like the receivers and transmitters. Communication satellites receive radio, television, and telephone signals and relay them back to Earth, on, to the receivers on Earth. Okay? Um, satellite phone systems. Uh, several companies have developed satellite phone systems. The radio waves from one phone are sent to the communication satellite. Uh, the satellite transmits the waves back to receiving phone on Earth. This is pretty basically a, a very common thing now. Uh, television st- uh, satellites. Both television networks and cable companies use communication satellites. First, uh, uh, television signals are changed into AM, FM waves. These radio waves are sent up to the satellites. These signals are relayed to local stations around the world. Okay? Uh, then, when I was a kid, everything just came across the airwaves. Okay? And there was three TV stations, NBC, ABC, CBS. Okay? Uh, and most of the time you could pick up, if you were lucky, you could pick up one of those. Uh, you had an outdoor antenna. Okay? If you were lucky, you had an outdoor antenna that was on, hooked up to the top of the house and went up forever, it seemed like, and that would pick up the waves. And it would <coughs> then you could watch TV. Most of us had uh, rabbit ears on the top of a really small TV, uh, and you had to manipulate the, the antenna, okay? Uh, and people would put aluminum foil on it and everything else to try to get a better. I, I've always thought that's why parents had children, uh, because they would send a kid up, to mess with the antenna, and as soon as it, 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 then you would hit just the right spot, and they would go stop. And now that it's coming in, so you would let go of it and walk away, and it would get fuzzy again. So you'd go back and put your hand on it, and it would clear it up. So you would stand there and hold the antenna while you try to watch TV from here, while other people were standing you to get out of the way because they couldn't see. 
Okay. Then they came out with the communication, the, the satellite disc, and they would fill this room, a bunch of them. I mean, they were just about that big. They looked like you were trying to transmit something to Mars. Um, and of course, now they've got those down to very small. That will fit, you know, on a pole or on the top of your house without any problem. Um, so things have changed. Communication, the way we can communicate, has, has really changed. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I want to see you guys. I tell my kids, when I was a kid, we had one channel. And that's if the TV, if you even had TV, you could pick up one channel. What are you? What are y'all going to do? What are y'all going to tell your children about your hardships of childhood? Back in my day, back in my day, we only had 218 channels. <laughs> no, we, have, we have like 2,000. We have like 2,000. And nothing was on then either. Ha. Ah, okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. We kind of chased a bunch of rabbit trails, but hopefully we bought it back. Uh, had a talk on uh, just life. So, pretty interesting day in sixth grade. Like most days in sixth grade. All right, bye, y'all.